Right, um, welcome to the next submitter, Monique Lee. Technical um, <clears throat> team, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here today. We're just checking if I can hear me. Yeah, awesome. Um, yeah, so really just uh, speaking in support of our submission um, from the Capital Accessory Advisory Group, um, which really just focused on the inclusion of people with disabilities as a focus group within the strategy. Um, I have to say we have quite a low expectation for any, um, any change to the strategy as a result of our submission, mainly because um, of the time we were very aware that the strategy has been a work um, over a long period of time and has involved a lot of people and there's a real um, agonise within the community to get it active and implemented and get underway and so the time frame was very short and so I have to um, we did just feel that you know 25% of our population um, identify as having a disability and so it was only fair to really submit on behalf of of those people um, being included and um, I really wanted to be here today to win my head of work of the um, economic development team because they have been absolutely fantastic um, hearing our call for inclusion and working really hard to not just have a bit of a tag on to the strategy but actually embed it um, into the final colour as, we, as it could be and um, and that deserves recognition, it really does. It's um, been absolutely fabulous. So I think where it is in the strategy now and the final pillar is an appropriate place for it to be um, alongside other focus groups, uh, Māori, the elderly, youth, and, um, and working towards a, what the outcomes are of um, opportunities for work and employment and a diverse um, diverse opportunities in the community for well-being and economic development. So that was um, really pleased to say. And in its modified form, which is what you'll have in front of you today, we really want to express our support for the strategy. And, um, and particularly the inclusion of people with disabilities as our focus group. So thank you for the opportunity to speak today. And we really just wanted to reiterate that for you. Um, Jill, I mean, um, question time. I've got um, Bernie Randall and Angela Buswell. Yeah, thank, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, my question is, do you see this report being more on economic well-being and not necessarily completely on economic development? Or can the two work in tangent together? I'm hearing a question. I'm just wondering if someone's writing that. Um, I think the two are very interrelated. Um, economic development is about, about a, a lot of things, but the outcome from economic development speak to well-being. And so where there are opportunities, um, and those opportunities are capitalised on, and people benefit from those opportunities economically, um, and a sense of purpose within the community, whatever it is, um, 
then that kind of they evolve over time and become better and stronger and and so that is a reflection of well being. And so from where we're coming from is just everyone has or should have the opportunity to benefit from that or be part of that. So I think that are very interrelated. Um, Angela Baswell, you've got a question, but it's been currently been typed out. It's your question. I have to admit I've been a bit naughty and it's not a question. I just want to thank Monique for um, being an advocate for her sector um, and look forward to working with her further. You're welcome. Right then, any other questions? No? Okay, um, can you thank Monique? Monique, thank you. Can I just say a quiet question? If you would like me to answer that. Um, I think it was from Councillor. Sorry, I had popped one through on email actually um, to Tanika, which she's just about to send through to Monique, which was um, on drawing on Monique's background in terms of the disability community, but also her professional um, background in terms of the well, development community, okay, how yeah. she can, you know, what the makeup of the board could be to re help reflect that. long-term plans, district specific strategies. The, um, the easier part is actually um, for them proportion. Even though there is a, a huge amount of work and often amount of work, it is often the easier part. It, it can be a lot harder um, to implement that plan and the way that it was desired to be or um, intended to be. That can be really hard and so with that in mind, with this plan, um, I think it's important to look at the outcomes that we want to achieve and focus on those and so that, you know, we get the outcomes that we want um, from those pillars and, and whatnot. And there are some sort of specific actions in there and they're the kind of actions that the community want to see, you know, whatever what they are. And so having people on the governance board that um, have expertise and those outcomes, I think is going to be important. Um, in terms of the final pillar, which is where people with disabilities come within, there are a range of focus groups. You know, you've got Māori, you've got the elderly, you've got um, people with disabilities, you've got those. And ideally you would have someone on that governance board who can really speak to each of those areas. Um, but it might not be possible depending on how big the governance board is. So another thing I think is going to be important to think about is that some pillars or some outcomes are going to be a lot better resourced and a lot bigger um, audience than, than other pillars. And so that needs to be thought about to ensure that one or two outcomes don't sort of override the rest or be as more important or more important than others just because it may affect more people. Um, obviously, someone with a disability <laughs> would be awesome to see because um, it's a good to say a diverse panel of people across all boards and government boards and that because um, we really want to role model that for you and show them that um, anyone can do this. Um, 
questions. Can you, Tanika, thank um, Monique for making, for breaking new grounds around this council table? Because what we just witnessed is actually the enablement of our ability to do what we just did to allow an inclusive council decision making. Thank you very much. Mr. Mayor, can we also thank That's right. Um, the next submitter is Trevor Daniel Grepa. Uh, those members of the council who have been here for the last three long-term plans will know that uh, Grepa is always concerned about the out, soft outcomes that have been included in the district in, in that plan. And so we're um, very pleased to see the number of um, uh, contributors talking about outcomes. But I'm here about talking about something else that's my, that seems pretty minuscule compared to what we've been hearing this morning. Uh, on pages 94 and uh, on page 94 and 191, um, you talk about uh, dependency ratio, and we see that there's no both uh, Grey Power and the older persons council are concerned about this statement being in there because we see no reason for it, and we see no it's not associated with any strategy in the plan, so we would like that removed, please. That's it. Questions? Any, any questions? No, thank you. Thank you very much. The next submitter is Jill Greek. Okay, thank you. Um, can I first of all say that I'm here, uh, I'm a community board member, but I'm here in, as a member of the public and someone with a considerable professional background in strategy. Uh, in a variety of public and professional, uh, public and private roles. So, um, and two things I would like to say quickly to pre preface my remarks is, one is, I'm sorry, Microsoft spell checker failed on my submission. I'm embarrassed about how it went forward. I've had words with them and we've sorted it. Uh, secondly, I too was a little disappointed in the summarisation of my submission. The, I think there are three key things to a strategy. There are where are we now, and I think the report does that quite well. The key things we're trying to achieve, what are our drivers? How are we going to achieve those in the environment? And then how these will be, will be achieved and what the district will look like if it's successful. And I think that the, the first one is, is very good. The second one, we've got some really good information, but I think the third one is very light and somewhat lacking. The, for me, 
the uh, important things are, um, what are our drivers? What are we trying to achieve? And I think in the, the strategies, what it calls its vision, these are really good drivers. They're kind of directional arrows. There's no way of how do you measure success on those? What are the, um, what are the, the quantum that we, we can actually define whether or not we're, we're succeeding or not? We want to attract visitors. If we have one more, is that success? If we have, if we have half a million and we're totally overrun with huge hotels, is that success? I think so. I think we need to actually um, be able to to know what is what our level needs to be. What economic growth do we need? Is all growth good? So there are a number of things like that. Um, so I think that the where are we now, there, our environment is actually really important. And for me, the environment is uh, we've got no money, we can't invest, we we've got very little to 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 fund anything. That's an important part of the environment. There's also the New Zealand COVID situation. We're in a fantastic position compared to the rest of the world. We've also got the risk that it may actually fall over. We've got our demographics. We've got a really good uh, dis um, dis um, description in this strategy about what our demographics are. What do we want them to be? And, and we, there's government and money around. There are specifics like the, the Provincial Growth Fund, the Urban Development Bill, which I'm not sure has been enacted or not. So we've got our drivers for change, growth, how much, visitors, quality, quantity, where from, that we want to attract industry, what sort of industry and why, what benefits is it going to give us, demographics, how do we change them. So I think that there's an, an important thing here, we've got the, the, a lot of good statistics and forecast of what's going to happen to Capity. For me, the strategic options should show this will change the forecast in this way. And if the strategy is not going to change the forecast, then is there any point in having the strategy? So I could speak a lot more about these things, but I think that the key thing is that we actually have, rather than just directional, we have where are we trying to get to. And finally, that the, where this will get us to in 10, 30 years' time, that picture, that's the Capity story, not a marketing document. Thank you. Very good. Um, questions? No? Councillor Randall. Thank you very much. As a community board member, and giving your time and expressing your views here, so I do appreciate that. Uh, Councillor Randall, she came as an individual, not a community board member. No, but she also has that role. You want to clarify that? I'm very happy to be so. I'm speaking today as a member of public with a professional background in developing and delivering strategy. Thank you. I just got her to clarify that for you, so that's right. So in any case, she accepts your, co your congratulations, I think. Um, I'd like to just take the opportunity to say thank you very much for coming on. It's very appreciated uh, listening to your submission. Of course, talking is always way better than reading it, so thank you. And I don't have a question except, uh, are you having a good day? I like the way you sort of glance at the chair. Um, thank you, Jill, thank you. for your submission. The last person, last submitter, James Westbury. I'm, I'll be opposite to what Jill was describing. I'm actually talking as the chair of the Waikanae Community Board with regards to um, just consolidating the conversations that I had with Leanne and Darren um, several weeks ago. And firstly, I want to say thank you for them um, for participating and engaging the community uh, board chairs with regards to the economic development strategy. And I actually recognise, and you know, some of the feedback I gave was actually. Um, the difficulty with such a strategy of, of trying to be everything to everybody um, creates a significant conundrum and also the difficulty of resourcing a strategy uh, in an economically um, challenged environment. Um, 
taking that forward and listening to uh, members of the community today, some of the pillars or PO that are described I think need to be um, looked at potentially, looking at maybe social well-being included in one of those pillars and also the environment. I, it, it looks like they're clear, um, what would you call it, aspects that need to be brought through. I can see that there, there's some of the foundation components that are described later on in the document, but maybe reflecting on some of the discussion that's come forward today, they are very important aspects for our community. Um, as well, how do we value the social and the economic and the environment and how do we get that balance right? Um, going back to a more um, Waikanae Pacific um, uh, overlay to this, um, making sure that things are timely and Pacific and resourced with regards to the long-term plan. I see the Waikanae Libraries detailed in there. I see that as an absolutely key um, investment in economic development locally um, and even regionally if it um, works and dovetails with the development of our Mahara Gallery um, at the same time. You know, the, the library in particular has the potential to encourage social inclusion. Um, it also brings people to our um, local uh, township and also the other economic benefits associated that for, with regards to retail and just being a place of social cohesion. I think it's one of the, the few... Um, items that the council has absolute Pacific control over that can actually add a significant amount of value and economic contribution to our local community um, as a local entity. Sorry, my phone's just gone there. So really what I'm trying to do today is appeal to um, you with regards to uh, considering the long-term plan but also making sure that uh, quite significant emphasis is um, placed on the things that are under your influence and control and are able to be um, implemented to be honest with depending on which your um, appetite for debt is about investing in our local library. Our local library can not only be a place of um, looking at books and so social connectedness, but it can also be a place for uh, commerce to occur if they create mixed spaces. The environment to which it's used, you can look at the environmental sustainability of the building as heating, um, also as a place of learning for our younger and older citizens. So really it's an opportunity just to reinforce the importance of the Waikanae uh, Library is on our community and uh, as uh, an asset for our community. Thank you. I'm nodding because I don't have the authority to um, to agree to that. I'm sure that the mayor was. Um, I think you've got some kind of human rights. <laughs> um, I was just going to question one thing in, in your statement was that the library was what I thought I heard. And I just want some clarification that the library brings people to our local township. Did you mean the library per se or the thriving of that whole area? provided um, indicates that the library contributes about 5,000 visits uh, to our town centre per month. Since the library has moved uh, to its current sort of revised or temporary location, that's gone down by about 30 to 40 per cent. So it is having a significant impact on reduced patronage of our town centre. So thereby, it is, if you look, talk to some of the, uh, the local businesses there, that is having a significant effect on them. So it is a, a significant driver to the economic performance of our community. But it's not just the economics that I want to touch on. It is the social connectedness that the library creates. It's a place of meeting and greeting for our community. It's a place of education. Um, uh, so it's a really a place of social cohesion. So it's, it's a joint um, endeavour. Um, and it's like any library, and I think... Uh, Guru even mentioned it in his recent article in the paper. You know, the librarians add a lot to our community. Um, so uh, it's really trying to appeal to council to see that this is one of the very quick to medium term gains that you can invest into supporting our community that's actually under your direct influence and control. A number of the 
um, which are likely to pro produce some real tangible benefits and quite quickly. Thank you. Any, anybody else? Uh, no other questions? Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. Through you to um, James. Um, how can the paper that we're discussing um, be made more effective um, in terms of um, benefiting the Waikanae Library? Like, how do you see the... I'd like to see some concrete um, timelines in there with regards to planning and um, where we might be able to see uh, the completion of a project, but also the difficulty is with regards to the long-term plan about the, the um, appropriation of funding uh, to secure either the refurbishment or rebuild of our library. At the moment, we've got funding in the long-term plan that's a long time out. Um, we've got some uh, provisional funds at the moment to support the um, project advisory group with regards to the library, but there is no investment in with regards to uh, a plan or build at this point in time. So it's really to see some real tangible um, timelines and points of delivery. Right, that, that brings an end to all the submitters, 10 of them. I will now, with your leave, move item 8.4 to take place now. The Capricorn's Economic Development Strategy Implementation Plan 2020 to 2023 on page 117. The staff members, Diana Hill and Darren Grant. I remind. Thank you and um, good morning. Um, as you can imagine, since we um, presented to, to you last month, we've been going through a busy process of engaging with the community in terms of feedback on the, on the strategy. Um, there's been a mixture of um, submissions, um, surveys, and also individual meetings and stuff like that. And so we've had quite a wide variety of feedback. But there's been some, I suppose, some key themes that have come through that we've tried to incorporate into the into the strategy. So there's been a you know, quite a bit of discussion today about the climate change and the environment, and we've definitely tried to incorporate that into amendments to the strategy. That is something that has always been part of a, a focus in terms of understanding in terms of growth, but you know, not a growth for growth's sake. It's a understanding that we want to have a quality growth. And so one of the aims that, you know, in terms of the aims in the PO, where we talk about that facilitation of quality growth, we have also included the, um, the protection and enhancement of the district and the natural environment. So we've tried to make sure that we bring that into the, into the strategy. We've also been talking about um, submissions in terms of the discussion about people with disabilities, um, um, feeds in terms of making sure there's clarity about growing existing businesses. I suppose in terms of incorporating that feedback, a big thing's about trying to, to balance that to make sure that we don't get a strategy that's trying to be everything for everybody, that it is a strategy that also acknowledges this other work going on in council, so that work to develop a climate change strategy and making sure that that linkage is clear in this, in this piece of work and, and making sure that those pieces don't try and compete with each other, that we do need to make sure that they do work together and those linkages uh, are there. Um, in terms of the discussion about um, the governance, um, what we've proposed is that there's a separate paper that comes back to the Strategy and Operations Committee that we come back and we outline you know, how that governance arrangement would work and you know, have that discussion with uh, you know, the independent chair sort of proposal. Um, I suppose what we wanted to do was make sure that Council had a chance to hear the submissions today about independence governance, that we didn't preempt any decision, there was a chance to take on that feedback 
and make sure that Council had a chance to consider that in terms of their decision in relation to the strategy today? Questions? Councillor Randall. Yeah. Just, just a quick... Yeah. The question is just regarding um, recommendation 46, regarding the appointment of, of a particular person. Were, were councillors asked to nominate people? Or how, how, how or was there a selection process for this person? I'm just curious to know how this name was decided. Um... Neil has been Neil Mackay, who's been the, the person that's been nominated, been nominated by a number of the different stakeholders through this, this process, and has been a sort of a, a name that has been involved in different discussions um, to date. Uh, there hasn't been a separate process as such in terms of calling for expressions in terms of a nomination. Councillor Elliott. Um, I actually realise I'm just going to save it for debate, thanks. Uh, thank you very much. I, I was just wondering whether on page 216 we could actually address some of those questions that were raised in public speaking time as a, a first question with multiple parts. Um. Yep. I suppose what we were so we've had some I suppose previous discussions with council on that what we were proposing to do is bring back a separate paper in terms of the strategy and operations committee in terms of those questions and oh, no so in terms of the, the paper that we come back would include I suppose a number of these these questions. So we've talked about in terms of the recommendation. Sorry. So in terms of the recommendation, we've proposed that there's a basically a paper that comes back to the strategy and operations committee that would talk about the appointment process in terms of the independent board members they would talk about the process in terms of elected representatives in terms of the board the terms of reference and also a performance agreement and what that would incorporate um thank you for that i think that answers that those questions I'm, if, if I'm hearing you correctly, those questions will be answered in the next paper, and, and if they're not, could I ask that they are? Um, I wonder if it's appropriate, and w with your permission, Mr Mayor, if we could possibly be taken through a hypothetical example of, this, or, um, of a decision made by um, what we're creating today and how that would then flow through to a decision, actually, uh, you know, the implementation of that decision. I realise this is, a, you know, will require the leave of, of our mayor, but it would be interesting, I think, just to hear from the implementation of an idea that's in the strategy and how it gets actioned, and you know, what involvement council has in that process. So I suppose one of the one of the actions is the is a workforce plan, and so one of the um, the key initiatives in terms of the, the growing skills and capability is the, the development of that. We would see that the um, independent board would have a, a big role in terms of how the scope and those sorts of things are established for that piece of work and supporting you know how that is focused. Um, we would see that there is a need for, as part of that, to engage with council about the scope of that piece of work and then the delivery and how that happens. So as part of any decision making process, there would be discussions with council about that and any conclusions that came out of that piece of work 
council staff would also be involved in that work as long as along with other stakeholders and partners sort of thing. And then I think it does uh, and as long as those discussions are formalized and not um, in an informal process. Yes, yeah, so, so we see that the importance of that elected representative in terms of that connection on an ongoing basis with this you know, board is important, but also that there is regular reporting back through the Strategy and Operations Committee and there's a clear understanding of those pieces of work and what's happening is key, as well as other stakeholders and partners as well. And one of those things is the reporting. I, I noted somewhere in there it says six monthly, but I'm assuming that um, that you don't want decisions made once every six months, so we're likely to see other reports come through that require uh, the consent and approval of council to make sure that we have action more than twice a year. Look, I think it's, it's, it's always going to be a bit of that balancing act to make sure that the group is not just reporting all the time, but definitely we want to make sure that there's regular communication and regular discussion with council, and council is very aware I think you know, a number of these pieces of work will be important considerations for the long-term plan. You know, how do we, you know, do we need extra resourcing in terms of things like destination plan and those sorts of things? So how are those sorts of things incorporated into other council decision-making process as well? Thank you. Councillor Buzzell. Just to follow on from some of the concerns Councillor McCann has had, I think too that there will be opportunity for briefings on certain projects and things that are underway as we do with lots of different projects throughout the organisation we get different briefings and updates so that will also form part of the communications back to councillors around what's what's happening. Um, my question um, a little bit is around, you know, we've heard some fantastic submissions, really well thought out submissions today, which is really heartening to see the engagement. However, um, throughout our extensive engagement over the last two years with our community, um, some of these groups haven't actually been a part of that engagement prior to kind of today. Um, and is there an opportunity for some of these groups to be lead partners in delivering some of these actions that we have in in our strategy? Definitely. I think you know, I think the the big focus on this strategy is about partnership and making sure that we are working with all the different groups. We are limited in terms of the resources that we have and that's how can we ensure that's that strong in integration. Um, you know, with Monique we've been talking about how that, you know, the group comes as part of the, the workforce plan and making sure that that's really integrated into it. I think um, in terms of the, the climate change, you know, we're not leading that project, but you know, making sure that there is that real focus in terms of the ED team, in terms of understanding the importance and you know, the feedback that we've heard today in terms of how that's factored into it and how that's factored into some of our other plans that come out. So destination plan and all those sorts of things that come out of this work and how we bring those different groups into that. It's important. Councillor Coates. Thanks, team. I think the um, the fact that we had few submissions um, highlights the work that has gone into try and produce a good document. And again, the um, the advantage of submissions is to be able to refine that document um, from the feed that we received. Um, what is difficult, having already read the plan prior to going out, I think probably three times. It's a little bit like spot the difference, <laughs> um, looking at the revised one today, taking on board the feedback. So um, forgive me you know, if I ask something that has been adjusted, but it is a little bit like playing that game of spot the difference. Um, there was uh, obviously concerns around the climate lens across the document, and I know, Darren, you addressed that in your introduction to the report. But uh, um, are the team confident that the feedback that's come through submissions has been massaged through the revised document we have today to reflect that um, the concerns from Alison and others around that sort of climate. We, we, we talk internally around that lens or filter put across across the work streams. Definitely we've tried to bring that through in a number of areas in terms of making sure that there's a clear statement in the strategic context around climate change in terms of the, the, the forward and those sorts of things. We've also, we didn't previously have the climate change strategy in the actions, you know, so making sure that those sorts of linkages 
uh, are much clearer. I think it's, a, it's always a bit hard for us to preempt what's going to come through that, mm. that strategy. So we've taken, I suppose, a, a cautious approach in terms of making sure that we've added to in terms of the, the existing content is there, but we're, I suppose, conscious about preempting what comes through that process Understand as well. That. So um, yeah, I support the independent governance model. Um, I imagine there'll be an opportunity for, so I, I guess the advantage of as a council, we understand all of those concerns, we've heard them, we live them, breathe them. I imagine there'll be an opportunity for that independent um, governance team to actually be able to be brought up to speed with uh, not only here's the document, but here are the concerns around, for example, matters like climate change. They won't just be going in cold with a document to then execute without a little bit of a briefing around the state of the nation. Part of the, um, the recommendation is well, that would be would that there's a performance agreement with the with the terms of with reference. Terms of reference as well, and so you know provided you know given the feedback, we think that that's a an important mechanism to say here's a you know what council wants to see or the community wants to see in terms of that focus for that governance board and how do we bring that through things like the performance agreement as well as the briefings and the understanding of what are the key things that have, you know, as a community and a council want you to focus on. And I guess to add to that, the likes of Councillor Hanford who leads that portfolio will have an opportunity to, to meet and discuss with him around the concerns in that area. And I think it's important that the um, that, that governance board recognises that we would want them to be contributing into the development of the climate change strategy that they would be providing, you know, and uh, the framework for that, there's a clear framework around economic development or a part for economic development in that mm, framework. Sure. And so how do we make sure that they recognise that they need to be contributing into that process Thank you. As well. I just four other brief ones. The, um, there's concerns around the independent model. Um, how is the, you've touched on it a little bit already, but how is the funding um, allocated in the sense that, because in one sense we've heard that they will do the work and then it'll come back to the council table, but equally I can imagine that will be overly cumbersome if they're wanting to, to do a particular piece of work. I imagine there'll be a certain level of freedom to be able to undertake a particular, say, around the workforce stuff without having to bring every decision back to the council table or will every action and, and subsequent funding required to deliver that come back through the council? I think that's that's part of the things that we need to work through with Level council. We see that there is a, you know, a number of things that are important to be delivered. I think it's important that there is a level of ability to get on with it in terms of, of actioning these things. But, uh, but making sure that that's clearly in scope with the terms of reference and the performance agreement sure. with council. Okay, thank you. Um, that, that ties into the um, accountability and reporting. Yeah, I think it's a valid question, but I appreciate there's a fine line there between, you know, um, transparency, but also getting the work done. So I appreciate we'll, we'll come back to that. Is what I'm hearing. Um, the uh, Grey Power raised a specific uh, question, and again, forgive me if this has been altered, but around the dependency ratio, was that addressed? I'm not too sure how, through their submission, it was actually just asking for it to be removed from the document. No, it hasn't been removed from the document, um, and I understand that they did, but it's actually quite relevant when we talk about understanding the dependency ratio that I felt it important that it be left in there as a definition. Okay. Um, I understood Grey Power's view, um, but understanding the true meaning of what the dependency ratio is, it's relevant when we talk about the economy. Okay. Uh, on page, last one, on page 141, um, there is a phrase here which refers to um, increasing opportunity for Māori business. And I wondered whether it was a typo or whether it was deliberately just singling out Māori business. And being a Māori business person myself, I'm not against that. But, but equally, I would argue that it should be opportunity for all business, including Māori business. Or, or is that a specific focus on Māori business because of, um, yeah, I know there is central government um, drive in terms of supporting Māori business as well. So that was on page 141. Uh, so that was was deliberate. You know, we we sort of um, we see this opportunity for for all business, 
how we wanted to make sure that there was also that focus to say how are we working better with, with the Māori business and making sure that that is not just the same as, as every other business, that there's, there's differences in terms of opportunity and, and ways to work. And we see that, you know, we wanted to make sure that, you know, we've, we've talked about the fact that there's currently a separate Māori economic development strategy. Yeah. And in the future, we do want to have a joined up. You know, we're, we're keen to see that joined up, but making sure there's particular references to there are some differences in terms of an approach that we will need to take. Thank you. So I guess just to round that one off, if there was an opportunity there and increasing an opportunity for a non mouldy business, that wouldn't be progressed. That's that's not what the statement's saying. It's just that there's a specific focus on mouldy business as well. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Through you, Mr Mayor. Um, I think Councillor Coots and Buzzwell have sort of touched on how we might be able to address some of the issues that were raised in submissions today um, through the, the process that's obviously going to come back to strategy and operations and I was, I was hoping that there might be a chance for us to workshop some of those things in the lead up obviously because some of it will take place in terms of the, um, the terms of reference, some of it in terms of the makeup of the board. So it might be useful to have that session um, in the lead up to that just to, because there'll be a lot of issues that we want to work through and this forum isn't necessarily the best place to, to do a lot of that sort of technical work, I guess. Um, one question I had was around uh, iwi representation on the Independence Government Governance Board. We've obviously gone from one to three now, and one of the issues that was highlighted in the independent review were, was the challenges that iwi have around their um, resourcing and capability to participate in all these things that Council asks them to do. So um, are we confident that they have the ability to, um, that they are adequately resourced to participate in this, or is that something we need to look at um, supporting them with resource so that they're able to have their voices heard in, in the governance body? That was a direct request, or direct feedback from, from iwi and they said that they do have capability within there. To, to yeah, very clear on that. Yeah. And that shouldn't be limited just to the EV roles as well. Yeah. Yes, they, they, we, we asked the same yes. question and they said yes. Yeah. And I think it's probably a, a reflection of making sure that you know we're clear about the, the roles and what they mean and making sure that we're working with EV to make those appointments. <coughs> um, first question I have is um, how does the resourcing for economic development work? Um, like, do we have a defined budget for this? I know in the 2015-18 strategy there was, um, but do we have a, a specific budget um, allowance around economic development? Yes. Yep. Do we have a figure around that? Um, it's about 800,000, including all the bits and pieces. Yeah. Um, and I noticed in the um, in the previous uh, strategy there was um, an allowance here for business attraction. Um, it, obviously, there's here for the events. Do we have a specific allowance for business attraction as such, or has that sort of dropped since um, then? No, there's a there's allowance for business attraction. I suppose a number of these things cross over with different activities, though, in terms of marketing and all those sorts yeah. of things. Yeah. Cool. Um, in the submissions, we've seen a lot of groups that. Um, well, on top of uh, those that have already been consulted, but <coughs> in an ongoing manner, what um, do you perceive uh, engagement with stakeholders uh, is going to look like? Uh, will it be ongoing? Will it I look, you know, the, a big part of the strategy is about partnership. So, you know, one of the core things that you know we see not only in terms of our role but the role of the board is those partnerships and making sure that that is focused on establishing those strong partnerships within the district but also outside the district as well. So making sure that there's a strong understanding of that strategic context and making sure that those work. So that ongoing engagement in terms of how that works is an important part of this. I think you know a number of these actions are not actions that can be delivered alone. They are actions that require the involvement of others through that process. Uh, partnerships are very, very important. Um, just building on uh, what uh, Councillor Compton was talking about uh, with regards to Tanga Te Whenua considerations, um, the report talks to the Māori ED strategy being refreshed um, and then it talks to, um, well, it, that Greater Wellington is also doing a Māori um, economic development strategy as well. 
I guess my concern is that there's a bit of a quite a bit of a double up here. Um, you know, there's resource going into a Māori economic development strategy. Um, although Māori have also indicated that um, they'd be happy to um, uh, for this strategy to be a part of the Kapiti Coast strategy. Can you give me some clarity around what's happening in that space? So our discussions in terms of iwi, you know, right through this process has, has been a strong willingness to have it joined up, and we've tried to ensure that that's reflected, and you know, basically ensuring that that's, you know, when this draft was approved, that we went back to to and and that they were supportive and endorsed the strategy. I think that there is a continued discussion in terms of is there anything that is not covered that they think that there still is a need for the independent approach and or the independent strategy, but we're keen to make sure that through the representation in terms of the board and the actions in the strategy, there's a clear sense that there is a, a partnership focus, that we are understanding the concerns of Māori and the iwi and that we've integrated that into a collective position. In terms of the regional council, that's a separate piece of work. Mm. We don't control that. That's fine. Um, I guess also building on uh, Councillor Compton's request with regards to a workshop around the um, governance side of things, is that well, uh, is that a possibility for that to happen? Because um, I think there's a lot of conversation to be had there leading into the decision process, uh, which I think you've got targeted for the 20th of next month. Yes, very happy to do that. Uh, which leads on to my next thing, which was to talk about the um, EV representation on that board uh, moving from one to three. Would that be conversation be left best left to that? Uh, yes, uh, yeah, yeah. we think uh, it's. I think I suppose um, it's something that you know we got direct feedback from EV on, and they think it. Uh, you know, they think for them it's a very important part of the partnership between EV and council. Um, Remuneration for the board members, hasn't, I, I haven't seen that anywhere. It was discussed, I think, in the meeting pre-Christmas. Um, has anything been finalised with regards to remuneration of the board members at all? No, that's part of the discussion that we would have with... OK. Um, seniors... Uh, so that's part of the discussion that we would have in part of these strategy and operations and, and a workshop and a with workshop. council? Uh, just uh, following on from the older persons council that I was at yesterday, asking to have the um, have that uh, definition removed. I think it was around the fact that we've got a um, distorted amount of retired persons up here on the uh, Carpeti Coast uh, in all sorts of um, in all sorts of ways, um, uh, both um, uh, financially well off and not so well off, um, and. Um, the, uh, can you just clarify? Their view was it doesn't appear to refer to anything. Um, um, and it uh, basically is a, a, a bit of a nonsense in relation to this bit of work. Can you please give me um, a bit more reasoning around why it's in there um, and why it can't be removed? They consider it a, a bit of an ageism issue. Um, I suppose we, we, we don't see it as an... I suppose what we wanted to show is that we are a unique population mix and the... Um, you know, you, you'll see in there there's um, some actions in terms of how we're working with older persons in the community in terms of, you know, plans and strategies and stuff like that. And we wanted to ensure that that, that showed that, that this is an important part of our community and that there needs that focus in terms of understanding how we work differently from potentially other parts or other districts. And we just wanted to make sure that there's a, you know, just an understanding of that difference in terms of us, our district compared to other Districts. Thank you. Sorry. That comment should be um, from Grey Power. If that's what they believe, that it's ageist, they should direct it at central government. Um, currently, everything the central government's doing says that in the next 20 years, 35 of our districts in the country will have more than 30% of the 35% of the population, something like that, over 65. <coughs> Dependency is not just the elderly, it's the, it's the young as well. <coughs> And the fundamental issue is that the, the, the worse that ratio is, the smaller the workforce there is supporting everybody else economically in any area. So it's actually a vital measure, and it's one that I've used since I've been here, because we are at the forefront 
of that change in terms of um, ageing population. We've got the second largest <coughs> proportion of it in the country. So I actually think that it's very important to us, and in fact, if I was Grey Power, I would be echoing Jill Stansfield and, and in previous years, uh, dear old Betty, saying that actually, why aren't you doing more in that space? Now, I probably shouldn't have opened that conversation up, but um, I, I, I disagree quite strongly with the fact that it's ageist or irrelevant. It's very relevant. Thank you very much for that. Appreciate it. Thank you. doing and you know there's a lot of that that often happens and uh, just a, a, if it's going to if you're going to instill it make sure it's resourced because if it's not resourced you're wasting your time and your money in the first place so you know um, you're just going to make pile a lot of work on a few individuals um, with no capacity to do the doing um, uh, you know if you're just a recommendation group that's something different completely um, Your Worship, I have some questions around process. We're obviously in questioning and, and questions right now with staff. At the point that we'll move to debate is the point where a motion is moved. Um, however, I'm really of the mind and given the number of questions and the range of questions that we've had and some of the information that came in the door, much to our surprise this morning, that uh, the next place I would like to see this paper is in a workshop with all of us just going over in, in detail any, any any of the obvious issues that have come up um, and things that we want would like answered and also in feeling, seeing that the paper is without this whole governance paper, I feel as though what's been presented today is, is, is very, very incomplete and I'm very uncomfortable personally about voting on it at this point. There is far more that I would like to know and I'm wondering, would it be appropriate in questioning now to suggest a, or that I would like to have this tabled? Um, I think how would you like this to go? Well, I, I think the question, question time, that is a question. Um, so can you phrase your question? Um, yes. Um, I, to I would, the staff. Well, to start, I would... Um, Mr. Chair, I'd like to foreshadow that I would like this t paper tabled, please. Both, re you know, both recommendations, 45 and 46, tabled, well, pending a workshop. I think you can test it at that time when we come to the motion. Um, Councillor Cook? Um, I, do, I have a question in regards to recommendation 45 on page 126. Um, and I want to be really clear that it's not a criticism of the Chief Executive or a lack of confidence. Yeah, you might need to sit <laughs> down. <laughs> And I might be just being picky and I'm happy to be proven wrong. The, the recommendation reads that the council approves the final version, then it goes on to talk about the final strategy and then the final design. Um, I have no issue at all with the chief executive signing off the, to completing the final thing, but I'm just wondering whether that wording... I, yeah, I'm happy if someone puts the recommendations and it's voted on to vote on the chief executive signing it off, but... It, when I read it, it just doesn't make sense. The final version of the strategy and implementation plan and authorises the Chief Executive to sign the final strategy once the final design is completed. Essentially, what? we approve it today and just leave it so it's like an annual plan. It's, or so have what, I got it totally wrong? So what we were asking Council to approve is, is, is this. Um, what we would then do is... is send us to a designer to put into a final yeah. version sort of thing. That so the content would be the same. That makes sense. It's just about the, the pretty vision of it. Mm. And, and Thank you. That makes sense now. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so, you, so you approve the ugly black and white one and I do the pretty coloured one and get my name on it. So. <laughs> Thank you. Councillor Hanford. So how do you think we can best address the concerns of the submitters today around the need to 
um, centre climate justice and to centre environmental wellbeing and our response to our climate change emergency through this process. And um, I do agree with what Jackie's saying in the sense that um, based on the really strong submissions that we have today um, around some of the content but also around the basis and the core of the strategy and the reason for it, um, making sure that we're like we're all talking about explaining the why and explaining why we're actually putting this through in the first place. Um, and if it doesn't have our planet and our people at the very centre of that and if our community doesn't isn't able to recognise that, um, then I just want to know kind of how you think we best address the concerns and the really strong oral submissions that we had today in response to the current um, document. Um, I suppose it's an interesting one because we've, we've had a lot of strong support for the strategy, you know, right through this process in terms of the, the version that came to the council council previously, and, and obviously we've now had wider feedback into it. Um, we've definitely tried to incorporate a stronger environmental focus and make sure that that is clear through the document. I think if there is areas where there is clearly identified sort of changes that need to be made there is the opportunity for those to be changed. I suppose there's also the discussion in terms of the governance board and how that would work and making sure that there is a focus, you know, within that in terms of the, you know, the, the performance agreement and the terms of, of reference. And so those provide opportunities to make sure that that is reflected. Um, definitely we have you know, brought in the climate change strategy in terms of the actions. This is not an action that, that we lead, but it's part of the council family and working with the community. We see that as being a crucial mechanism for making sure that that focus is really understood in terms of economic development. And we've also tried to make sure that some of these aims and those sorts of things in the document are beefed up to reflect that focus in terms of the natural environment mm -hmm. and the understanding about climate change as well. Um, so yeah, yeah. I, I do agree with Jackie in the sense though that having those terms of reference and like with this and being able to see that clearly represented would make you more comfortable but it's just because of the strength of the submissions and the support we know there is in the community to do more in the environmental space. Um, having that alongside the strategy to be able to know that that will be represented in the way that things are going, like having that, yeah, having that there. But so those fun. terms of reference and, and the performance agreement are there for council, would be there for council to approve. So okay. It is clear. You are saying that the paper that will come to um, the James's committee will will be preceded by some workshops, which will allow us to have input on the terms of reference and the appointed, right? So and it's that point that we can then provide some leadership directions in some of the key areas like the climate change issue, the rural economy, and stuff. Is that, am I correct? That's correct. Okay. Council Coates. Yeah. Oh, have you been bumped off? <laughs> <laughs> Councillor McCann. Thank you very much, Councillor Coates. Um, I'd just like to follow up on, on what Councillor Hanford was saying. And one of the things that uh, that I'm I'm happy about is the way in which the environment and sustainability is has been incorporated into the document. But I suppose this is a really new. I, I think this is new within New Zealand that we are now having um, discussions about economic growth at the same time as we are having discussions about ensuring our environment, sustainability, etc. And what just gives me a little bit of pause uh, is that we're, uh, that we're entering into that without the expertise to help drive that at a very, very, um, at, at from the beginning, so that the, the, the set up of this organisation doesn't have someone who will be sitting on that um, board structure to ensure that that becomes you know, top of mind. And I only say this because it's absolutely new. And we've got one councillor um, in the proposal that would sit there, but it worries me, not, not because that councillor might be Angela Buswell, but, it, but I would have assumed that the person driving that from a council perspective 
will not quite have the same um, passion to drive from from a from an uh, from a environmental point of view, and I think there needs to be a balance. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to dis disperse uh, or say anything negative, but I, it's just trying to find a balance when we're at such a, a a starting point in the way that we're actually viewing this. And for that, I think the document has been really, really fantastic. But it worries me that I'm not sure the balance is there. I think as part of drafting the job descriptions for the director roles of the govern new governance board, that it'll be crucial that expertise in climate change be built into that. So it won't be a prerequisite, but as part of screening those applicants, we can look to select somebody that has strength and knowledge in, in climate change, for example. So that's something that we can do with building into that when we start drafting the job descriptions for the director roles we can look at building in those expertise. Look, I think that's, you know, these are the things that can be put into the performance agreement. And so that, that, you know, there is, you know, a clear understanding that that is a focus of, you know, importance for council and the community and that there needs to be, you know, within the representation because no one's been appointed to these roles at this stage. And so that could be part of what's reflected in the makeup of that board. At, at the same time, work through what is quite a new um, way of working, that we have someone involved who will hold that torch um, more strongly than, than someone who, who has the tick box or, or can say that they have those concerns. Because I, I, I do feel it's a really difficult balance to strike in, 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 at, at any point. And it is good to have someone, I think, perhaps in that structure that can hold people's feet to the flame, so to speak. Okay, can I suggest also to not to overlook the fact that there will be three very strong representatives from the EV side, and they carry a particular kaupapa which is very strong in the environment, climate change, and the rural economies. And, and with that, Mr. Mayor, while I understand what you're saying, and, it, and it's it would be very dangerous to suggest that that might not be the case, that might not be the case, uh, and there are organisations that are predominantly owned by iwi that do not always have uh, an environmental track record that is stellar. I think we have to look at the individual, the, the, the structure of this board and go, oh, have we got someone there who will hold the kaupapa of making sure that this is sustainable and environmentally friendly? Well, I, I go back to the question to the staff that um, the, the appointment you know, the process of the independent board members and the EU representatives, that's going to come back to us before we do that. So that should cover what the points you're raising and some of the other points that have been raised. I just want to get this across the board because there's work that's still not complete. Council Coates. Two questions. The uh, first one is around the desire that we're hearing now to sort of lay this on the table a little bit and delay and have a discussion around the uh, terms of reference and, and all the other different matters around that. What's been the feedback from the stakeholders in getting this signed off in terms of time? I suppose, you know, the feedback is this process has been going on for a long time, um, that it's taken too long to get to, to this situation and that they're keen for, I suppose, those next steps to to happen as, as possible. Thank you. The second one is a follow-on from that really. Under the, um, the, the suggestion around holding this off because we need to do the other work around the terms of reference and around the performance agreements and so forth. If I use a, an example around the waste, um, just kind of think of the actual term for it, but the group that we set up around the waste minimisation work, the, the it, could someone just clarify the process around that? Because my understanding is that you make a decision at the governance level to do a particular piece of work, which, which is establishing a working group. You don't equally at the same time make a decision to do all the other work that goes alongside that, the terms of reference and so forth, that that follows. Am I correct in that? That the David Ledman, the one that he, you know, that you don't make the decision to establish the group and then equally try and make the decisions around the terms of reference and all the other bits and pieces. 
those do follow in sequence after that and in similar vein with other groups and things that we've set up. I get there are many answers, but the, yeah, sen sensibly you decide what it is you're trying to achieve, decide what type of governance you want. In this case, it was the waste task force you're referring to, David Ledson. That was a mayoral task force, so it, d it didn't have the um, formality of some other groupings. Um, but yeah, it, it, in a process like that, we tended to pull it together and say, this is what we want to, you to achieve, and then, and then identify the terms of reference. Um, I hate to say it, but I guess that's exactly the process you took with the org review as well. You set the terms of reference after you decided what you wanted to do. So, so that's not an uncommon approach. And if I think back to the Economic Development Leadership Group with David Weber, that was similar. Uh, it was somewhere along the line, agreed to set up the group. My understanding was that the, the other stuff was done, not in the same meeting, but in you know, further meetings down the track. I'll, I'll nod, but actually, because you were involved, you you know far more about this than me, so we'll, we'll, we'll call that a, a question you asked where I go, yes. <laughs> yeah, and, and look, to be fair, I haven't gone back and checked that, but I guess my point that I'm trying to make is that our normal practice isn't to try and achieve everything in one day. Uh, establish a particular direction that we're going, then try and establish all the other um, bits and pieces that help uh, facilitate that particular piece of work. Uh, if I may respond, because you know I, I understand everybody's concerns. Not every T is crossed and every I is dotted in people's minds. Um, we could sit here for another five years and still have questions coming up. Um, it is it is rare to the point of impossible to try and have any one strategy area cover every strategy area. So the sensible thing to do is you link it, which is what Darren and the team have done, and you point to the other areas that need to drive that focus. However, it is totally your choice. If you're not comfortable, then this goes back on the back burner, uh, and um, I know that staff will be getting criticised by external stakeholders for the fact that we haven't advanced this. Um, so <laughs> back on the workbench. So uh, that is entirely your choice, as I've said. Um, I would say that we're here because we've heard the message that this thing needs to move forward and some of these actions need to be delivered. Uh, totally your choice. Um, Jocelyn Pravna. Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, so, Darren, I, just made, I wrote down a comment that you made in relation to Councillor Hanford's um, questions and, and you made the comment that there's opportunities to make changes to the document so I'm just wondering when potentially those changes can be made please but in terms of changes I suppose what we're wanting to do is is move forward if there is any changes that council want to make as part of this decision process we would that would be part of this decision process we've been through quite a few variations I suppose it's any any things where you know, if council feel that they haven't been addressed, they want us to make a change for that. That could happen as part of this process. So thank you. So obviously, um, well, I have also some some concerns about um, some of the uh, the climate change and the environmental well-being um, aspects of um, the submissions today. And so, my, one of my other questions is: um, so when you talk about climate change, do you also and talk about environmental well-being? But we definitely have a, a well-being focus that's, that's been through the, the document. We have wanted to ensure that in terms of what is reflected in, in terms of climate change is a, is a process that Council is still working through in terms of what that means. And so it's a bit hard for us to preempt all that okay. information. I think you know what we wanted to do was ensure that there's that clear linkage in terms of the climate change strategy and recognising from a you know, community perspective in terms of economic development, that linkage is very, well that, that, you know, that focus is an important piece that is, needs to be worked through further. Okay. So my last question too is that um, there's been some suggestions that something could be added to the terms of reference or um, selection of, of the board or whatever structure is put in place. Um, we ensure that uh, some of those aspects that have been talked about today are included but um, I'm just interested in your view about actually the primary document which is actually this um, the ED strategy having those 
um, that wording in there rather than actually relying on those those terms of reference and the board, which potentially could be lost further down the line. Look, I suppose what we've tried to do is, is bring that wording into it. We've brought it, we, we consider we've brought it into it in a number of, of ways. Um, I suppose in terms of the strategy would be how do we bring it into it more without getting, you know, trying to be to be everything is, is that balance. And so, um, you know, if there's some suggestions in terms of changes, that we are open to that. That's a council decision at the end of the day. Thank you. James. As I indicated prior, actually, this is trying to create a document that meets everybody's needs, being all things to everybody, is pretty challenging. And picking up on Wayne's comment also, it, the public have articulated some pretty good components about what you know the environment uh, aspect and uh, to be included. You know, any strategy should be an organic document, okay? It will move, it'll change in time. The time periods that are set in here look like they're three years. They're very short at this point in time. The problem is we've got COVID on our doorstep at the moment. We've got some major economic challenges. Um, and I'm, I'd be quite disturbed as a local business owner, as, uh, you know, as my community, to see that we continually delay um, the development or agreement of an economic development strategy in a time like this, we're never going to get it 100% right and I think that we should be looking forward to, you know, finessing and refining and it, it, it will be re finessed and refined I, and don't get me wrong, I, I think the public articulated some really good aspects that should be included and I think maybe in time, yes, we can do that but at this point in time we've got a, a here and now and we've also got a 10 years time and I think actually yes we need to look at those but I'd, I'd be really disappointed if we can't move forward on some of those aspects because the more you delay this James, the greater we are going to give us. We take your point, we are now going to debate question time, right? Um, anybody else got any last questions? Jackie. Um, so, staff, today, was it a surprise to you for all the years of consultation that's gone along and the workshops that have happened with stakeholders and the public and the business community and back to our desks to actually have a really, really important, vital and considerably sizeable sector of the Kapiti community that's contributing to economic you know, industry and, and our viability here? be completely unnoticed through the entire process, except for the fact that they had some other conversation with the Mayor. Was that a surprise to you, or were you aware that that sector was n had not had any input so far, and are you aware of other sectors that may not have had any input so far? Is this in relation to the rural, the um, organic, the organic submission, organic group submission? Flowers to horticulture. So, um, you know, we, in terms of the document, have reflected, and we're well, not reflected. We have discussed the rural economy in terms of we see there's an opportunity for for more work. I think that there is a um, a number of sectors where there is more engagement needed, and that's where that sector PO has been put in place to ensure that we are working closer with our sectors and that we have in more of a joined up conversation with them. Um, I suppose it's, it's always an issue in terms of capacity, in terms of how many you know different groups that we can deal with at any one time. And but you know, you know the discussions and the focus has been how do we start to ensure that we are, have a good understanding of the environment we provide in terms of an economic environment, but having more engagement with individual sectors going forward as well. It comes to be at this point in this process with such an important document going forward for the future, which is the whole strategy of economic development without any actual working input from that sector. Um, and, I, and I do say too that that sector was mentioned, I talked about them strongly as, an, as a Tihua resident of 12 years at a way earlier briefing, and yet they had never been approached. 
um, are you comfortable that the strategy you have uh, is something that Councillor with all due respect, you're harassing the staff. They've already no, said that. And also you would notice that in paragraph 19, they have listened to the submissions that have come in and laid a number of points, including the environment and the climate change issues um, and the rural economy also. So I think it's, it's covered. Oh, okay, no, sure. I'm interested in that. Yeah. Um, and Angela Boswell, did I hear you wanted to move? Yes, I did want to move recommendations. Sorry. Is it um, do, you want to, do you want to test yours? So that's a procedural motion, Mr. Mayor, which is why I left the room. And so you don't foreshadow it. You leave the room, then we can vote for it. Do you want to accept that? I want to give you a chance to say something. I want And just let me appeal to you not to test it, simply because. Um, the, sub, the recommendation says there will be an uh, appointment process for independent board members and EV representatives, the terms of reference, and we've already this, uh, this is a question raised by Councillor McCann that the staff have said the workshop is a possible, you know, definitely can be done and we can discuss those. So it is in that area that we can then stress the number of issues that you want to raise, whether it's the rural economy, the climate change factor, and all those sort of things. Sorry, can I, can I just add something in here? Um, it was really awesome to hear the submissions today and some really powerful submissions, but I don't want to lose sight of the many, many, many hours of discussions with other key stakeholders around economic development in Kapiti. It has gone... It's gone over over two years of discussing, discussing, and so I just want to encourage councillors not to be too swayed. Yes, I understand the importance of the submissions coming in today, but we haven't heard many of the conversations. Councillor Elliot, do you want to test your? No, but you've got to put a, a motion for you to be for testing. Okay. What's your motion? And yes, I would like to put it to motion that this, this paper uh, and both recommendations and it be tabled and I would like to um, have the opportunity to speak to why to open debate on this. Um, but I would like have to you table got a, this. You need a seconder for that. Oh, okay. Second, so, uh, so... Point Yeah. Okay. So that's look. So, so look. No, no, no. No, you, 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 you still need to put your motion. If you move, then you don't have a chance. So you can think of that as that is great news for you that you're really happy about. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Jackie. Just put, put your motion. You got a second. I put. Can you re re reiterate your motion so that the staff can get it right? So that is your motion. That's your motion. So, you, so you've got a seconder. You've got a seconder. Jocelyn Prabhna is a seconder. So I'm going to put the motion that. So the motion from Jack Elliott is that the ta paper we ta put left on the table, right? Pardon? Councillor Elliott, I'm, I'm trying to be helpful here. The, the motion should be that the document lay on the, on the table. table. Not be ta it is being tabled today. Your, the request that you've asked is actually... The, that's not what you that, asked. That, that's what she asked. Okay. And it's been seconded by um, Jocelyn Pravnov. So I'm going to put it to the table, to the vote. All those in favour, say aye. Aye. All against, no. Aye. Division. All those in favour, put your hands up. Okay, in the chief executive.
Councillor Elliot, Councillor Ravnath, Elliot, Ravnath, Ravnath, and Randall. All those against? Councillor Hanford, Halliday, Compton, Buswell, Coots, the Mayor, Councillor Holborough, Councillor McCann. Right, so that's lost. And now I'm back to Councillor Buswell. finally get this over the line today and um, it's been a really long time coming and I really appreciate um, our community working alongside um, our ED team to put the strategy together and to get it where it is. Sure there is a hell of a lot more um, work to do and as, um, as Monique mentioned this morning um, in her submission that this is kind of the easy part um, to get the strategy. Now it's actually about delivering. And thankfully we've got um, some great stakeholders in our community that will help deliver this community strategy and that's exactly what it is. Today we heard some fantastic submissions and um, I know with the willingness of our community these um, these ideas and so forth will be reflected in, um, in the actions going forward with, um, with this strategy. So um, thank you very much. Right, open for debate. Um, Councillor Holborough. Yes, thank you. I'll be supporting these um, recommendations today and I have a further one that I'll move after we finish the debate on this one. Um, just to allay some of the concerns about embedding some of those principles that were brought up today. Um, just, just, I just wanted to answer a couple of concerns. Um, uh, the, I think the climate change concern is somewhat at least um, addressed in the wider strategic con context and I'm a little bit surprised that this wasn't wasn't a, a, a major enough change or this wasn't enough to address the climate change issue because it is talking about that wider strategic context. And I'll read it out. The strategy's objectives and actions also recognise the importance of delivering inclusive and sustainable growth. And that's what I think one of the submitters was talking about today. Kapiti Coast has declared a climate change emergency and we are committed to enhancing the wellbeing of all our residents and communities while protecting our natural environment and adapting to protect our future environment. And I think that's a really powerful statement. It maybe needs, needs its own heading so that you notice it a bit more and maybe take out the word also so that it's, it stands alone. But I think that's actually really well written and addresses quite a lot of the concerns that were raised today. As long as that focus is embedded in the terms of reference, which is something that I'll address in my motions, in terms of the concerns of grey power and it being an empty term and not used in the document, it's actually used in a graph on page 180. And um, so that, that's what the term um, dependable, uh, dependent <laughs> yeah, is, is, is referring to. So it is needed in the def definitions in order to explain that graph. You'd have to take out that graph entirely as well if you didn't have the definition and then you'd lose that important piece of information. So um, I just thought I'd address that. Um, yeah, I think it was really amazing to have these further submissions today. I think it shows how broad the field of economic development is and how many people across so many sectors of our community are interested in it. And having been to some of the previous workshops which were so well attended and that those robust discussions happening right from the very get-go with those pillars, I would just really want to congratulate the staff. And 
I mean, we're, we're kind of dealing with some, some new issues and some broader issues now, but I think what we have here is a really good basis, a really good foundation for the work that's going to go on, and I look forward to the next paper that's going to come to Strategy and Operations. Thank you. Look, I, um, I'll be supporting um, the paper today. Um, I think we as a council need to take responsibility. Uh, we've had two years at least um, that this has been ongoing and there's been times at this table that we've criticised the length of time that this has taken. So, you know, I, um, you know, it helps you understand why I sort of object to um, it taking longer. We've certainly heard from many of the stakeholders uh, outside of this chamber the need to get on with it um, and to get it going. And, um, and Councillor Elliot, I <coughs> absolutely under, understand the concerns that you've raised and I don't necessarily disagree with them. I just think by um, the document laying on the table isn't the way to address those and I believe they can be addressed uh, through the processes that have been explained. Um, so you certainly have my support in that area. Um, the, the feedback that we've received, you know, I mentioned earlier that um, we sent out a plan and that the submissions have helped us refine that. Um, certainly there's been adjustments made to the plan already. We're hearing that uh, other aspects of the submissions will be fed through the performance agreement uh, and so forth. So uh, you know, for those submitters that are left here today, I certainly don't want them to feel that their um, time and their submissions haven't been wasted. I've certainly taken them on board and, and others have. Uh, you know, certainly it's a challenge for the portfolio holder for climate change um, who sits around this table and has fed into this document over the last few months um, and will do moving forward to make sure that those concerns are relayed um, in her role as portfolio holder and I'm sure Sophie will do that. Um, that being said, we have had, I would say, a low number of submissions given the scale of the, um, the work that we're doing and I think that that um, does show that largely um, you know, uh, partly because of the time it's gone on, but also because of the quality of the document. Um, and I see that those submissions that have come in, you know, helps us refine um, that work even further. Um, so look, I, I um, am happy for this to proceed and I hope that uh, councillors support it um, and look forward to working on the next step or the next part in this process, which is around those performance agreements, the establishment of the board and so forth. So we know we're near finished. This is just this not the start line, but we're we're not we're not there yet, team. And I think we can do the rest of the work as we move along. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and, and thank you, James. You've stolen most of what I want to say. Which I, I think the the thing that's important for me is I want to support this document is that this is only a step forward, and a number of councillors and members of the, our community have raised concerns, valid concerns, I think. Uh, and I would just hope that we make sure that we address those as we go forward. But I think it is um, incumbent on our council to make some progress here. And I think the document actually has been well put together. Um, and I'm, I'm very happy when I read it. But those concerns uh, are still valid and they still exist because it is a really complicated thing that we're trying to do, which is create balance. Uh, it's certainly something that previous generations have been unable to do, so to think that it's going to be a, an easy journey would be uh, disingenuous uh, for all of those people who have tried to get here in the past. So thank you for a great document and a, a really good discussion, I believe. I think we have all learnt things today and I look forward to us continuing to ensure that this uh, program of work uh, takes on board the things that were raised today. Thank you. Councillor Bompton. Thank you. Um, I'm going to be speaking in support of the motions as well. I, I recall a month ago when we were talking about putting this out to public consultation, Mr Jefferson uh, challenged us to possibly approve it without going out for public consultation and I said that um, we've wasted nearly two years for this, we can wait another couple of weeks to hear from the public. I think what we've heard today actually reflects that that was the right decision to make sure that we went out more broadly than we had done. We got um, we got that input and we've seen some changes to the strategy and I think what's important is we've had reassurances um, from council officers today that actually those um, concerns that have been raised are still going to influence the discussions we're going to have about the governance group, about the terms of reference. So um, the very valid issues um, on very big challenges that we face as a community 
are still alive, they're still going to be incorporated in our approach to this. And I guess that's the word to us as a councillor is when we have those discussions about who's going to be on the board, when we have the discussions about the terms of reference for how the um, the governance group is going to operate, we need to make sure that we carry through those concerns that were raised of us today. I think um, there's been a lot of discussion about ro growth and how we address that as a council. And I guess we're in a position in Carpety where growth is happening to us at a very basic level in terms of population growth. And if we don't deal with that, we see a continuation of the issues around housing affordability, around lack of economic opportunity for people, around um, uh, degraded environmental outcomes. So making sure that we have the strategy that takes account of those things is really important for us as a district going forward and when we're considering all, all the, uh, the policy decisions that we have to make. So I'm really excited about um, what this holds for our future. I think we're at a really crucial stage. We've got a bit of a bit of time with Transmission Gully and um, just today, Pika Pika to Ōtaki, looking like it's been delayed for a year. So we've got a bit of extra time before we get these uh, these big growth challenges really barreling down at us. Um, and COVID's also giving us a bit of time in that regard as well. So, you know, having the strategy in place, getting some runs on the board is really crucial for us. So, you know, congratulations to staff for the amazing work they've put in over the last two years. I've sort of from outside councils, saw this process start and now being on the inside, seeing it end, it's a you know, really exciting opportunity for us. So a big thank you as well for all your work you've done on this. Councillor Hanford. I'd just like to total call um, essentially what's been said um, before by Rob and um, Gwen as well. And I'm excited about workshopping the terms of reference and the appointment process to ensure um, that we do reflect the need to centre our response to climate change in this and I do have confidence that we can hold um, what we've heard today in the submissions through that process while continuing to um, I guess hold ourselves accountable as elected members to be able to do that and um, I really hope that that we do that through that process um, and continue to remember um, what our submitters have spoken with us about today and um, I also look forward to ensuring that this interacts with the development of the climate change strategy moving forward and um, figuring out how we how we make sure that those two strategies are talking with one another, especially in, in the development of the climate change strategy. A number of councillors are addressing each other by their first name. Um, surely, um, for the people who are watching, yeah, um, everyone should be addressed in the form. Uh, Bernie, Bernie. Oh, sorry, yeah. Councillor Randall. Um, Councillor Holiday. One more of a statement, I guess. But uh, look, great to see that this um, is finally here. Uh, also, very interesting um, them actually at this table voting on it, considering where I was when it first started. I want to thank, thank you to staff, uh, but I also want to acknowledge the working group. Um, uh, Heather Hutchins uh, from the Chamber of Commerce, uh, Councillor Buswell, Councillor Buswell. Um, Liz Coe uh, from Kita, who picked up after General Lee Philpot uh, moved on, and also General Lee Philpot, uh, who started off as a uh, Kita representative and then became an independent advisor. Um, in the early stages, General Lee did a magnificent job of keeping Kita very informed uh, and the, um, I think keeping the ED conversation on track. Um, they've all been very tenacious through a very challenging process. Uh, I'm aware, very aware of volunteer fatigue in this area. Um, and I want to acknowledge the hundreds if not thousands of volunteer hours that have been poured into this both uh, through working groups and all those, also the support people uh, and groups around the working group. This has been a long process over the past couple of years plus. Uh, to literally drag this strategy over the line via the refresh process after it failed to gain traction at the beginning of the last triennium. It really shouldn't have taken so long. There has been a discussion of the cart going before the horse with regards to the government's implementation and I have an expectation, and this is what I'm hearing today, that this will receive the highest priority moving forward um, as, we are as we get ourselves together around the governance. With COVID, now more than ever, we need a structure around economic development and the number one action is also destination planning, which needs, or our number one action, which needs to happen in the soonest to help our local businesses. I'm expecting to see ongoing community and stakeholder engagement and I believe that to be very, very important. It's also very important that we as governance need to keep abreast of this economic development strategy to ensure that we don't have a repeat of the last iteration of this. Uh, this, this needs to move forward, it needs to develop as it matures, uh, it needs to create outcomes, 
And then when they start coming to signed off, we create new objectives, uh, new objectives with, um, with outcomes. This is a long-term strategy and will evolve, initially addressing key stakeholder issues and concerns while developing an ongoing work plan and projects, that, and projects uh, in both partnership and with community as well. I note we have heard from feed-ins from groups that have, um, we, we haven't really had people here that have been involved in the working groups over the years because they have been doing this for years. They are fatigued and that's why they're not here today. They have done the hard yards already and I'm picking up on what both um, James Risbury and uh, Councillor Coots and, and other councillors here have said. I'm not necessarily happy uh, in more than a few ways but this needs to land now so the framework is in place and so we can get on with things. So I'll be supporting this motion as we move forward. Councillor Elliott. Um, we've moved recommendations 45 and 46, or just mm -hmm. one? Okay. So, all right, thanks. It just wasn't mentioned. Um, so, thanks to everyone for all the work. It, I know it's been absolutely years, and for that reason, I don't feel as though an extra five days until Tuesday for us to workshop some of the finer tuning and things that we have needed answers to for this entire two years but never actually received them and they're still not complete today. For instance, the governance paper will be settling on and discussing a whole lot of issues around going forward with econo this economic development strategy and how it's going to work and how we're going to integrate and who's going to run it and who gets to be the decision makers that we've not had any answers to. And to today, we still, in fact, when the paper arrived, it said that that paper will still be coming. So that'll be one of the reasons why I'm certainly not comfortable voting on this today. Um, climate change and the range of people that came in today has uh, been important. It'll be addressed as a pillar. And it was an eye-opener. I'm concerned that this process has got this far down the track uh, with those people not being in the discussion. It was described as broad, but I think it shows tunnel vision through the whole process, that somehow it is accidentally enabled to be dropped on our table today as a policy, developed to this point with absolutely no input from such important people contributing to the sector. I just don't quite know how that happened. To have a paper in front of us that says, please appoint a chairperson. At what cost? And where was the transparent selection process? It didn't happen. Uh, so I'm not prepared to vote on that one either today. Uh, I haven't been able to do due diligence, haven't had the information in front of us. Uh, the same goes to remuneration for some sort of a board. You know, it was an $800,000 budget per annum for this, plus the reader annual contributions, plus contributions to infrastructure like the Gateway. Frankly, it's all right payer money. And it's our job to do our job and ensure that that's spent properly and do due diligence for that on behalf of our ratepayers. So for many reasons, I'm certainly not comfortable to be voting to support this at this point, but I probably would next week absolutely wholeheartedly once we have the dis opportunity to sit down and fine-tune some of these actually very quite simple issues. Anybody else? No? I suppose I need to put in my 10 cents, 25 cents. Um, look, this has been a vociferous uh, issue for a number of years. Um, a lot of work has gone into this. And let's not forget when we are raising this issue that we did put this through a briefing. Was it through a briefing that we had? And so some of the issues that have been raised should have been raised then. Having said that, I think the uh, public submission process has been quite good. And like other people have observed, some very good submissions have come in. I mean, I've always been an advocate that this district is a, is a provincial district. That is our strength, both in terms of the open spaces that we have, the environment that we have, the rural economy that we have. Um, it is not quite registered early enough, but that's not a problem because there are issues that we can, this can be discussed uh, to the terms of reference 
and, and I know that uh, we need to work harder to engage those sectors. And I told the uh, reminder by the Deputy Mayor that we still have long-term plan coming up. Some of the issues that we are discussing about where we are heading is actually a long-term plan. And don't forget a much more important document parallel to this is also the development management uh, strategy. That is another. And then we have the district plan that's going to land to us in terms of what changes we need to have. There's a whole lot of other things happening. And not to forget, regionally, we have the regional growth framework. And while we are, the region is starting to work towards a spatial plan that will influence our growth, we are also facing changes to the RMA, some really significant changes to the RMA that's coming. So this is not set in stone. This is moving. And what is needed is for the first stepping stone that we need is to actually land this. So I'm quite happy that we've got a, a very clear steer from all the councillors, majority of councillors, that we need to land this. Having said that, the recommendations 45 and 46, do you want to be taken separately or together? Yeah. Uh, before that, I think uh, if you want to write a reply or are you happy? Get it moving. Um, let's keep on. That's an uh, election plan. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like it the way you said in baritone. Awesome. Um, so, um, recommendation 45 and 46 moved by Councillor Angela Buswell, seconded by Councillor Janet Holbro. All those in favour say aye. 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 Those against? You want, the, you want that recorded? Okay. So, that's, that's um, Councillor Holbro. You've got. So this, this carrot. Oh, good. We can have lunch now. Thank you very much. Uh, James. Uh, count, no, count. No, there was. A, uh, you, I asked whether you you want to be recorded. Yeah, I was and just you said clarifying. Yes. So, so, so the mayor replied by saying, "Do you want your votes recorded?" And you all said yes to that, which is different to a division. So, y yes, and he replied by saying, "Do you want your votes recorded?" So, councillors Randall, Pravanov, and Elliot, and you'll raise your hands uh, to be recorded. If you still wish a division, you absolutely can. But I took it that you were happy that your votes against would be recorded, which is also legitimate. So, it's we're in your hands as to which you would prefer. Recorded. recorded. Okay. Um, and so I would like to add, whether it's through a recommendation or just noting, um, that the council notes and acknowledges the hard work of the ED team in developing the ED strategy. Yeah, can you do that, mm -hmm. 